Uh, yeah, good to go, everyone good? Yep. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, once again, unfortunately, people are seeing my face on the television news uh, because of the horrendous start to uh, 2023 with the number of lives lost on South Australian roads. Uh, people would be aware that now the number of people who've died on South Australian roads so far this year is 37. That's in comparison to 71 for the entire year last year. So 71 lives lost last year uh, is 71 lives lost too many. It's 71 families who are grieving and will continue to grieve for the rest of their lives, the loss of their loved ones. We're not even a quarter of the way through 2023 and we're over halfway towards last year's number of lives lost. Now, um, to say that that's disappointing is an understatement. It's a disgrace. The number of lives on, lost on South Australian roads so far this year is a disgrace. We've been talking recently in media conferences about um, ramping up our uh, education to the public and having a more focused approach in relation to road safety so that we can continue to try and drive home the message that if you behave like a fool on South Australian roads, if you don't wear your seatbelt, if you speed, if you drink or drug drive, if you get distracted or if you drive dangerously, you are the next person who we're going to be talking about on the front page of the paper or in the news. And we certainly don't want that to happen. As part of actually starting that next phase of our education pieces, this afternoon we'll be launching a series of online social media posts that highlight the impacts on these amazing people standing behind me and their colleagues. Because at each of one of those 37 lives lost this year, there's been 37 teams of emergency services personnel, hospital personnel and others who have been involved in witnessing the horrendous traumas on our roads and the results of those traumas on our roads. So that's 37 teams of um, police officers who've been out to secure the scene, to investigate the circumstances of the crash, and worst of all, to go and knock on the door of the loved ones of someone who has just died. Police officers going and letting somebody know that they've, uh, a family member that someone of their family has died is one of the worst jobs a police officer can do. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Then behind me you have representatives from Country Fire Service and Metropolitan Fire Service. These people, yes, they're paid to do a job like all emergency services workers, but these are the people that go to scenes and often have to cut people out of vehicles to either save their life or in some cases simply to cut them out so that their body can be retrieved safely. These are the people that go along also with South Australian Ambulance personnel to the scenes. The South Australian Ambulance personnel are often involved at trying to save someone's life. They're trying to put life back into a lifeless body on the side of the road until there's no more options available and they've exhausted everything they can do. And then you've got other emergency services like um, the SES and also the CFS as well, particularly in regional areas, who are volunteers from those communities who go out and also assist at scenes, either by securing the scene or by helping emergency services. And every emergency services worker that goes to a fatal road crash has to deal with the screams, they have to deal with the blood, and they have to deal with the trauma that is evident with every road crash where a life is lost or someone is seriously injured. I reiterate that none of us complain about that. We understand that it's our job, but it's horrendous. And so what we're saying is part of this next series of education pieces is at least have some consideration, if you're not going to consider yourself, at least have some consideration for the broader impacts that your poor choices on our roads make, particularly when it comes to our emergency services workers. And this is not just limited to those people who are roadside. People who work in emergency departments and hospitals people who work in health facilities, looking after people with lifelong injuries. These are all people who are also affected by people's poor choices on our roads who end up either dead or um, with lifelong serious injuries. So these social media um, education pieces will be about the impact that it has on police, fire, ambulance, emergency services workers, SES personnel and others when someone is killed on our roads. The rest of the education pieces that will flow from this 
are going to be fairly hard hitting and they're going to be fairly confronting because what we're concerned about is the message is not getting through. And I'd like to give you an example that has actually come out of yesterday's fatal crash uh, near Strathalbyn. So picture this. The police have set up a cordon to help investigate and keep the road safe at last night's crash at Strathalbyn. A vehicle pulls up to the crash um, site, to the, uh, the road blockage site, with a female, a 59 year old female in that vehicle, and a young person, a child, in that vehicle. The police officer goes up to speak to this female, and in the course of speaking to them, has caused to put that person on an ALCO test. So that 59 year old female, who's pulled up at a fatal crash um, barrier, blows 0.087 on an ALC test. Now this just shows the absolute apathy or disregard that people have got at the moment, which has to stop. This 59 year old woman, 0.087, arrives at a fatal crash site within view of the fatal crash site with a young person in her car. Now she's lost her license for six months and had her vehicle impounded. Now, I would think that that would be enough to actually go, what is going on here? But the second part of this tragic story is, the police officer who was going to deliver the death message for the loved ones of the person who was killed in last night's crash, on their way to deliver the death message, a 44-year-old male from Aberfoyle Park was detected driving at 175 kilometres an hour in a 100k zone by that police officer. Now, I can only imagine the shock and frustration that that police officer experienced, having been given the job of going around and knocking on someone's door to deliver a death message, only to be confronted by someone who is driving like an idiot. And do you know what he said? I was just blowing out the cobwebs. Seriously, just blowing out the cobwebs? This is the irresponsible behavior that some people are demonstrating on our roads and it has to stop. So as always, we are ramping up our enforcement uh, capability and we are ramping up our education campaigns. But what shocks me about this is that within kilometers of the most recent fatal crash, you've got a woman who gets picked up for 0.087 near the crash site, and you get a person, a male, who's driving at 175 k's an hour, also within about 10 kilometers of the crash site. This just goes to show the absolute selfish regard that people have got for anybody else on the roads. And like I said, this just has to stop. And please, while we're talking about this, think of my colleagues and my friends behind me from the other emergency services and health departments, because this is the real impact that your behavior has on our roads. Yeah, unfortunately at the moment we are also seeing Unfortunately, at the moment, we are also seeing a slight increase uh, in the number of serious injury crashes as well. So what this means for us is that there's sometimes inches or seconds between the difference between having a lifelong injury or being killed in our roads. And when both measures are up, what that means to us is that the public is not necessarily getting the message. And certainly this is a multifaceted you know, issue that we face here. This is not just about police education and police enforcement, we certainly play a significant part in our pulling our weight in this regard. Uh, but what it does show is that everybody actually has to take responsibility for their actions on their roads. But the age group that's had the biggest jump in fatalities um, between last year and this year is the 40 to 49-year-olds. That's up 5%. Do you know why that is? The problem with the age group that's up the most between the 40 to 49-year-olds is that they're actually not alone. Now, these are generally people who um, have grown up with uh, tighter road safety legislation around drink driving and those types of things. They're generally people who don't and haven't taken as many risks in the past. So, um, no, I don't actually have the figures as to exactly the cause or the contributing factors to the crashes that those people have been involved in. But what we are seeing again is the number of lives lost on regional roads outpaces lives lost on metropolitan roads uh, by a long way. It's still around over 80 percent, sorry, over 70 percent of the regions of uh, lives being lost on our roads, and that certainly still remains true. But at least two in three people are country people that die on country roads. Any 
Uh, look, I think that um, one of the main one of the main issues I, I, I suspect is part of this course is that people just don't think it's going to happen to them. Yeah. You know, uh, if I actually pointed out to every single person standing around me today and asked you if you actually use your mobile phone whilst you've been driving, or whether you crept over the speed limit a little bit, I'd hazard a guess that the vast majority of you would have done that. And this is part of the problem. I also worry that people are getting distracted and concerned about what's going on in their life, and that is potentially you know, impacting their, uh, their concentration when they're actually on the road. And whilst that may be a little bit understandable, we all have worries and concerns from certain times, when you hop behind a wheel, it's a one-ton bullet. It's going to kill someone at any particular point in time if you don't use it wisely, if you don't drive properly. So, you know, these are some of the things that we're trying to unravel, we're trying to grapple here. And certainly the focus of our, the beginning of this new phase of our education campaigns, uh, which includes focusing on the emergency services workers and the impacts upon them, will roll over into um, a new campaign relating to motorcycles, which will be released next month, and so on and so forth. But particularly into the Easter long weekend, we will be coming more blunt, we will be becoming more graphic, because we really just want to get the message through to people that you may not think it's going to happen to you, but just ask someone who's lost, who, who's lost a loved one either this year or in the years preceding, because it lasts forever. What are you hoping that the mock crash site at um, Port Wakefield achieves? So there is a, uh, a mock crash site at uh, Port Wakefield, which has been established now and is in the lead up to the Easter weekend. We do know that a lot of people do travel uh, to the regions on the Easter long weekend, and it is a good opportunity for us to reinforce that message. We're hoping that by having a visible sign, such as a wrecked vehicle uh, on the side of the road in the township of Port Wakefield, where the speed limit is lower and it is the safest place to do it, gives us an opportunity to remind people who might be halfway through their journey for that long weekend, or indeed over these next couple of weeks, to just to reset, refocus, and make sure that they make the rest of their journey safely. Do you think there's been enough of a focus on road safety messaging in Oh, look, I, I think if you just have to look at the number of road safety campaigns, the number of new road safety campaigns that has been rolled out over the last couple of years. Um, the, the confusing thing, or I guess the baffling thing here is that last year we had the lowest number of lives lost on South Australian roads since records began. And not much has changed in terms of the education piece that we're putting out, not much has changed in terms of the enforcement piece. We're still out there doing as much proactive policing that we can do. And yet, in the first, you know, less than three months of this year, the amount of people that have been killing themselves on our roads is out of control. Yeah, so, um, there hasn't been any cutback in regional patrols and there hasn't been any cutback in the highway patrols which are based in the regions. So we use our um, intelligence to drive where we're going to be placing our highway patrols so that we can be in the right place at the right time and certainly targeting the right people. And this is not just about the regions, it's also in the metropolitan area as well. So we always, and I say always because it is a constant effort where we you know, adjust, say, the recidivist offenders that we are targeting, and we unapologetically target recidivist offenders to take them off our roads. But also in the regions, we also target those roads which we know are, if you like, the most dangerous roads in South Australia at this particular point in time. And we also try and target the times when fatal crashes are occurring, based on what the data and the intelligence will tell us. But this, again, therein lies, you know, a, there is always a limit to what SAPOL can and should be doing in this space and this is why we always say road safety is everybody's responsibility. It's responsibility. If everyone drove responsibility then we would have less crashes and less lives lost on our roads. It's that simple. Do motorists expect to see more police patrols out and about moving forward as a result of this kind of Yeah absolutely. As I've said in the most recent uh, media conferences we have already doubled our um, formal drink drug driving operations uh, for the foreseeable future. So we will be rolling them out much more frequently and that's statewide. So you will see those formalized drink drug driving operations both in the metropolitan and the regional areas. And we are also uh, looking at other ways to 
increase our presence on South Australian roads um, through the use of the, um, some of the usual tactics that we use, which I won't necessarily um, disclose to everybody because there are those people who don't want to be caught, um, but we're going to be out there to catch them. So I won't divulge all of our tactics, but certainly you know, I'm comfortable that we are out there maximising um, our visibility and maximising our presence on our roads to catch the people who are doing the wrong things on South Australian roads. Yes, yeah, so I understand uh, the young 16-year-old lad uh, from the crash at um, uh, near Marriottville um, the other day uh, is still in a critical but stable condition. Um, uh, that's about as much information I have at this stage. And certainly, our thoughts are with that young man and his family. Um, and uh, you know, maybe this is maybe this is just another way to look at it. Put yourself in the shoes as a parent of a child who's been in hospital since early this week, not knowing what their condition is or what their condition is going to be and what impact that has on you. How is that going to change your driving, how is that going to change your driving behaviour and how is that going to change your influence on the loved ones around you and how you want them to change their behaviour. Now these are some of the heartfelt stories and I think yesterday we heard on radio from one of our own media members a really heartfelt plea and a really heartfelt description of the impact of lives lost. You know, he talked about the fact that families who've lost a loved one on the road hear a favourite song of the person that's gone, or they go to a favourite restaurant of that person that's gone, and those memories come flooding back, and that pain comes flooding back every single time. Every birthday, every Christmas, every Easter, every special occasion, that pain comes back for those families. 37 families this year, 71 the year before, and many hundreds the years before that are living a lifelong nightmare because of people who've died on our roads. Have you been able to determine the cause of the Strathalbyn crash yet? Uh, so the cause of the Strathalbyn crash uh, is still under investigation at this particular point in time. Uh, people would be aware that the vehicle has left the road and collided with the tree and that's as much as I'm able to say at this time. Uh, so I understand, uh, so we're in relation to the crash at uh, Hackham uh, last weekend, uh, there were two 17 year old uh, lads in a car that was involved in that collision. Uh, my understanding is that both of those uh, people are still in hospital and still undergoing treatment. Uh, and I believe that uh, SAPOL is still waiting to speak to uh, particularly the driver of that vehicle. There was a pursuit as well in the southern suburbs last night. What are just common common damages of that kind of behaviour, not only with other motorists and themselves, but in bureaucracy as well? Uh, yes, so there was a, a pursuit in the southern suburbs last night which has already been out in the media. You know, this, um, this particular person is a criminal. You know, they, are, they are engaging in criminal behaviour. It's as simple as that. Um, this is not necessarily about, you know, say, someone who is, makes a split second decision to speed or you know, a decision to speed because they're running late or being selfish and they need to get someone in a hurry. This is a criminal who's taking deliberate um, actions to commit criminal offences, not just um, evading police for a pursuit but other, other offences that he's since been arrested for as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Much appreciated.